So let's get the thoughts of Roya and Kevin. David Cameron, everywhere. You've come back from conference, I know. I um, was at that smug fest, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, David Cameron, what do you think? <laughs> Well, I always think with speeches, uh, actions uh, speak much louder than words, particularly when a leader is making a, a speech and it's all fine and dandy to so say you're going to show your caring side, just as about you're about to make more people poor by taking away their tax mm. credits. And you can have, uh, you can say you're going to tackle uh, tackle the the poor and have an assault on poverty, but he's assaulting the poor, low earners and some middle earners. So it was a nicely developed uh, and uh, you know, delivered speech. He could take it apart quite easy. He probably is now. I've written in the mirror. He's like the Volkswagen of uh, uh, British politics. Uh, <laughs> once you begin to check it out, I mean, uh, you know the emissions are a lot worse than uh, you're supposed to think. It had it had mm. the ring. A lot of commentators have sort of talked about the fact that. It, 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 he was sort of going back to where he was almost sort of eight, nine years ago yeah. um, and taking sort of back the centre ground and caring less about sort of lurching to the right because now, of course, he doesn't have to win a third term and he's come out and said that mm. and it had that sort of ring of this sort of Obama yeah. speech now where he doesn't... It's not that he doesn't care, but he knows that actually what he's saying is probably going to have... I don't know, less, not less impact, but it's going to mean less sort of down the line because he's not going to be... But he's not he... going to be held to it. And the, yeah. one, the one thing I was a bit disappointed about was I, I found the personal attack on Jeremy Corbyn a bit unnecessary. Mm. I mean, the whole, you know, Britain hating, you know, terrorist sympathiser thing, we heard all of that from the Tories in the run-up to, um, you know, the, the Labour leadership election, and it didn't really seem to strike a cool bit then, and I just felt... But it was, it was only a... one line. Yeah, in an I, hour I know, speech. but it's made, the front, it's made quite a few front pages. Um, um, th it was a carefully chosen I line. Think very call, yeah, I think to call you know. somebody a terrorist sympathiser you know and anti-British is a pretty I, low Because he said the death of Osama bin Laden was a tragedy on... Was it Iranian television? A, a tragedy on a tragedy on a tragedy. Yes, indeed, indeed. He the actually, context was slightly different. A, I, I, well, of course, you know, Dodgy did have twisted it, because, of course... He said, Jeremy Corbyn said, 9-11 was a tragedy. Of course it was a terrible tragedy, 3,000 uh, people dying. But then Cameron went on in his speech, I'll tell you what a tragedy is. Mm. It's people in those planes, in that building, jumping, jumping you know, to their deaths because they didn't want to, want to be burned to death. Yeah. Corbyn knows that. He said it was a tragedy too, but it was the way he twisted it. I, I, that, you know, what that, was a, that for me was a little bit um, mistimed and, and just, I, it felt like it, it felt jarring in, in that, mm. in, in, in the speech today. But in terms of mm. where David Cameron has positioned himself, Dan mm. Hodges, I think, reckon the Telegraph website, um, said it is now, well, first of all, he said that David Cameron has just erected an impenetrable force field around the centre ground of British politics. It's now impossible for anyone on the what? progressive left to construct an intellectually coherent argument for voting Labour. Is that what, what he's done? Yeah, I think Dan's The centre ground, even the left the yeah, I, think, I think Dan's naive. I think he's naively swallowed this. And if you go back to 2005, when he was uh, hugging huskies and had all that greenwash, uh, remember then the Guardian uh, fell in uh, love with uh, Cameron for a while, and even toyed internally with backing him at the election. Then he then he wins in in 2010, or he ends up as prime minister in the coalition, and they were okay. shocked to find out he was a Tory. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's let's wait and see what he's what he is doing. There but is, the, the papers no... like the Daily Mail don't like him because they yeah. don't think he is a Tory. No, but the, you know, the, the Daily Mail may not like him, but the Daily Mail have backed the Tories at every general election I can remember. They backed John May in 97, they backed William Hague in 2001, they backed Michael Howard in 2005, they backed Cameron in 2010 and 2015. They may publish Ashcroft's so, Call Me Dave and most of yeah. the lurid details, but not all of them. Yeah. Uh, they, of course they'll do that, uh, because it's a, new, a newspaper, but you know, they're a conservative paper. Most the Telegraph's a conservative paper. Most papers in Britain are conservative so, papers. Most of them right, are so owned by people who don't pay tax so fully in this country. Are you both saying that the real David Cameron did not stand up today? No. That this that he does not want this socially progressive movement to oh. be his legacy? No. So what, why did he do it? He look, he's on a huge ideological programme to change the British economy and how people people live and the role of the state which is rolling back and diminishing and the fact is the, the state is there to help most people. It's not hindering them, it is helping them. He's on a huge project. Now I don't, I don't believe he's full of... Uh, yeah, I don't think he's a racist for instance so when he talks about discrimination against people, he mm. doesn't want them to be discriminated against. But it's all fine and dandy again for him to say that it's terrible that uh, you know people with uh, foreign-sounding names can't get uh, can't get jobs. But yesterday, Theresa May in mm. that speech whipping up uh, uh, prejudice against refugees and migrants and misrepresenting uh, facts and the position. God blimey! 
is there's either two Tory parties or but, they're just they're just did the, trying to have it both ways. Yeah. Did the tone of her speech yesterday slightly jar with the rest of the message from the Conservative Party or you know, Theresa May seems to sort of do her own thing, doesn't she? Yeah. She doesn't. She never really seems to mind whether what she's saying just with the rest of the Tory party. And I, 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 I just felt like David Cameron felt like he could sort of say what he wanted to do, whether he meant it or not, because he, I just well, think the fact that he's not. He knows he's not going running for election again. Yeah. Is, is going to just change the way yeah. he. So, so the things. independent was that Cameron or some left-wing lookalike? Is the uh, is the. Yep. Headline in the end. Yeah. I think and, people have got a bit overexcited about the fact that he's, he's talked about sort of, you know, multiculturalism and multi yeah. you know, and, and and tackling poverty. That hasn't turned him into a socialist. Uh, no, the, the, the independent, because of its proprietor, did back, somewhat surprisingly, the Conservatives too at the last election, yeah. although they said they wanted a bigger uh, Liberal Democrat part of a, a further coalition. I predict the independent will spend the next three years, mm. or, or however long Cameron is there, attacking the policies when they see what he actually does. It's, it's fine, and you know, you can make these speeches, but t judging by what he's doing, and he's making people who are poor on uh, low earnings and even middle earners, yeah. he's going to make them poorer. Yeah. Mm. Well, if you look at the Times, is yeah. that millions more will be flown. Yeah. They're talking about three million. Um, Escaping the Russian bombardment, and it's, I mean, it now now yeah. seems Assad's ground defence is helped with helped by Hezbollah. As That's well, right. Um, like. the, the the Times is very much it, it's, it's well, it's either a neocon paper or a liberal interventionist, depending on which of their columnists you read. But it's very, it's very much for Britain taking part in military action yeah. in Syria. It was in 2013 when the vote was lost. It's, it still is now. Would have then been attacking uh, Assad. Uh, I don't know who quite they want to attack now, whether it's just the Islamic State or others. But mm -hmm. they're quite but they're quite rightly pointed out that most of the people who are fleeing, most of those refugees, Fleet most Assad. of the, yeah, yeah, that's right, Analysis. and he's, he's barrel bombs yeah. and he's, he's chemical weapons rather than fleeing the Islamic State. Uh, but the, 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 the terrible bind is in Patrick Coburn in the, in the Independent, who's a great writer on the Middle East, pointed this out that Assad might be the best short term uh, chance of getting some type of um, solution, but mm. I mean, it's kind of it's, that's kind of awful when you consider what he's done to his own people. Yeah. And when the protests started in 2011, uh, they were for freedom and prosperity, and they were peaceful. And it was his uh, violent reaction that, uh, yeah. that, that well, spiraled it out is, of control. The question is, who is the greater threat? Not just yeah. to the Syrian mm. people, because the answer there might be Assad, but who is the mm. greater threat to the West? And yeah. then you might go Islamic State, and that's when you yeah. want action taken. Yeah, but are the Islamic Assad support? Yeah, it's right. Are the Islamic State? A danger to the West, or would they have stayed in their well, area? The warnings They'd are: been, if they return home, yeah, they would have. They would, well, that's you know, that's that, different. That's the question, isn't if it? they go and stay and live in the Islamic State, these uh, you know Problem fanatical is, zealots, uh, are, are they then a threat? You now have you now have a situation in Syria where you have, you know, America and Britain or and France, you know, bombing there, trying to get rid of Assad. You have Russia going in and bombing, desperately trying to keep him. Mm. You know, and Iran are now, you know. Getting in on the action too, and frankly, you know, Russia are getting their way on everything now. So Assad, yeah, well, mm, well, the British looks position pretty looks pretty safe with Russia protecting the, the, him. The British position seems to have changed, though. It was it was topple Assad last time, and now it's keep him for a bit until mm. you know, some transitional period, until he can restore stability, yeah. which may may be the answer. Uh, lots more still ahead, including making it look easy, and the Telegraph as well, which is just in. Corbyn refuses to meet the Queen. We will <gasps> discuss that more in just a moment. Well, welcome back. You're watching the press well, preview right. with me this evening, the journalist and writer Roy Nika and the Daily Mirror's associate editor, Kev Mogwar. So straight to the Telegraph. <laughs> Corbyn refuses to meet the Queen, for now at least. Roy, I know you're very excited about this one, aren't you? Uh, this, is a, this is a very good story um, by, by Christopher and Gordon on, on the Telegraph. I mean, this has been rumbling away for weeks. There was a lot of speculation. When Jeremy Corbyn accepted the invitation onto the Privy Council, there was a lot of speculation, a lot being written about it. It was August, it was a quiet season. Would he or would he not? kneel in front of the Queen and swear to be her, her loyal and most, you know... This is after refusing seven. to sing the National Anthem. So, exactly. So, a few weeks ago when he well, was he at... he didn't say he refused. No, he said right. he was lost in thought. Lost in thought for the entire National Anthem. At a, at a memorial to the veterans. veterans. At a memorial service. Thinking of his mum and dad's role in... I mean, that's what he said okay. in the Second World War. OK. Yeah. And then immediately came out and said, in all future services, I'll be, I will be it. singing the National Anthem. Yeah, he won't get lost again, yeah. Yeah, I mean, come on. <laughs> anyway, do continue. So, um, <coughs> this story is now saying <laughs> that the first Privy Council sort of inauguration ceremony um, was due to be tomorrow. Um, 
Corbyn's people have come out and said um, he was invited to attend this, to um, have his inauguration, to kneel before the Queen and kiss her hand and swear to be a, you know, a, a loyal and dedicated servant, but he has apparently prior engagements. Now, Jeremy Corbyn will have known about this date for a very long time, as will his team. Um, they say at the bottom, um, it's not a snub, this needs to be resolved. They've been asked, you know, is he going to go to the next Privy mm. Council inauguration? And there's no definitive answer. So, on the face of it, but it seems as if this is a bit of a snub and he, you know, he, he doesn't. Why? He doesn't. Why him, but he, could use a, he could use a mechanism. Yeah. He, the, the, the suggestion is he can use a mechanism where you can be inaugurated onto the Privy Council and not have to actually go and meet the Queen and kneel before her. But you know what? Mm. If that's what he wanted to do, he shouldn't have accepted the position on the Privy Council. Yeah. It was hypocritical to do it if he wasn't going to actually. Yeah. Go through one of the it. one of the Queen's. Uh, I'm sure she won't miss him hugely. The, yeah, because there's more than 500 privy councillors. No, it's not like it's I mean, the in a small club of a dozen. Is no, it, the it? truth is, it's, it's it, a bit it, churlish. Yeah, they, they give it. They give it a time-serving knights of the Shire and backbenchers on all sides. You know, there's just a whole load who those want to go around and call themselves the right honourable. Um, but there was a time one of her, uh, the Queen's uh, ancestors. Uh, wouldn't let in uh, Ramsay MacDonald, who was the Labour leader, because he'd been a conscientious uh, objector in the First World War. Uh, he became Labour's first Prime Minister. He did join at some point. Whether he bended the knee and brushed his nose against her hand, because I don't think you kiss it, kiss it, do you? You just sort of rub it with your nose or something, hopefully mm. uh, with a clean nose. It, um, but it is, you know, it, it some, is... somebody... But the, the interesting... This has been thrown up in the Tory graph. Uh, now, either, either politically from the Conservative Party or fussy people mm. in no, the establishment in Whitehall to, to try and do him in, uh, no, no, in again. Kevin, 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 if he, if he doesn't go and do this, you know, he's, he's not bound to, but he, well, they, they, well, they, yeah. they make the point he so, would be the first ever leader of the opposition not right. to do this. So that, come on, come on. it's not one, just the fact that it's the Tory graph one, making this point. Right. That's Jeremy Corbyn trying Somebody to make Somebody has briefed this chunk. to make a lot of mischief. Now, one, I know he's away out of London uh, and, until, su else, until Sunday. And two, that means you might come back and d you might do it at the next uh, meeting of this ridiculous uh, group. But thirdly, if there's an order in council, well, there's clearly a process other people will have done it. I'd like, well, maybe the Privy Council can, but, can give us a full but, list of people Kevin, who... Kevin, is, is it another reminder that he is a, a square peg in a round hole? And at the moment it's fascinating, but eventually it might become a bit tiresome, do you think, or, uh, or not? Well, uh, I don't think a square peg in a round hole is the correct way to do it. I think he is, he's, he's not part of the establishment, he's not an, not an insider, he's not playing their games. And that's it, where they try and suck you in. But so the every, game is to every... become future Prime Minister. That, no, that yeah, is no, the no. game. Their game isn't to have the whole establishment so game. So the whole establishment, the whole establishment going... game of getting you in the Privy Council is to make you like them so you're less of a threat, so you don't go for radical change. Oh, of course Kevin. it is. That is the warm embrace the, is... of <laughs> the establishment. That's what it's all that's about. That's not what it's the to, Privy Council is to protect is themselves and their privileges. So and you go along. that's what you really think about, he shouldn't have accepted his position on the Privy Council. The Privy Council is about unelected power. He is about accountability and so elect, why did an elected he accept the position? He should, because, have he should have refused because, he should have refused the invitation. Right. If this is the stance he was going to take but, and he didn't want to be in the establishment because, like you're saying, he should have just said no, I be, don't want because, to Because like many things, if you become an MP you've got to take an oath or you've got to affirm. And it's why Dennis Skinner will always say, you know, to, to the Queen and all those who sail in her, or others cross their fingers, others others, and you fan out with the uh, national anthem. An incredible number of politicians said, wow, just sing it, just mumble it, just mutter it. He could have said no. Uh -oh. Very simple. No, but you it, don't it, have to sit on, on the Privy get, Council. You get yeah. access to papers you have to see sometimes. Look, we were going to do the Bake Off. Mm. Oh, oh, we can. Oh, oh. I know, but it's somebody, over. Like, somebody like me haven't seen it, you see. You know, you just ruin it for you. There's a little warning there for all those people who are watching us and got it on record and... Look away, no. look away now. Well, are we allowed to see it? She's just... She, you, you the gallery also, is sighing in just, my ear. Just, just tell them England are also at the Rugby World Cup. Uh, other, God, did other, we miss that? <laughs> <laughs> They've got it recorded and they haven't watched it we yet. Love Nadia. Oh, we've run out of time. Can't talk about it anymore. Oh, anyway. no. oh, what? the rugby. <laughs> Is that, have we run out of time? I think we have. Um, <laughs> lovely to see you both anyway. We'll talk more about Corbyn for half the programme. Yeah, maybe yes. you can enter the bake off. <laughs> <laughs> Roy and Kevin, see you at half eleven. Thank, Thank you. you. So to the weather. <laughs> Hello, in just a moment, the press preview as we take a look at the morning newspapers. But first, our top stories. Police have tonight charged a man with the murder of PC Dave Phillips. The 18-year-old from Wallasey is also charged with trying to injure another officer, burglary and aggravated unauthorised taking of a motor vehicle. 
Sky News understands that FIFA's president, Sepp Blatter, has been recommended for provisional suspension from football's world governing body as Swiss prosecutors carry out a criminal investigation into his activities. And David Cameron has accused the Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn, of being a terrorist sympathiser in his speech to the Conservative Party conference. Hello there, you're watching Sky News and the Press Preview. In the next half hour, we'll see what's making the newspaper headlines with the journalist and writer, Roy Nika, and the Daily Mirror's associate editor, Kevin Maguire. Good to see both Good of you. Hello. So to the front pages, first of all, The Sun leads with the widow and children of PC Dave Phillips, who've paid tribute to him as a super daddy and a hero. The Eye leads with David Cameron's speech to party conference, saying the Prime Minister showed his caring side by focusing on tackling social problems. The Metro says David Cameron unleashed a scathing attack on Jeremy Corbyn, claiming he hates Britain. The Telegraph claims the Labour leader is set to snub the Queen by using a legal loophole to get out of meeting Her Majesty. The Times reveals up to three million migrants could arrive in Europe after fleeing the latest ground and air offensive in Syria. The Daily Express says Theresa May is backing secret EU plans to deport hundreds of thousands of failed asylum seekers within weeks. The Daily Star leads with the trial of the stepbrother of murdered teenager Becky Watts, whose body was cut up after her death. The Daily Mirror also leading with that story, saying the court heard how Becky's murder was allegedly sexually motivated. The Financial Times says a deadline is looming for a takeover deal to be done between two rival international brewing companies. And The Independent reveals wind energy is now cheaper than any other source of electricity in what environmentalists are calling a landmark moment for the renewable energy industry in Britain. So let's talk now with Roya and uh, Kevin, their choices tonight. Uh, your choice being the picture there, Russia stepping up strikes on Syria with a barrage of this time long-range cruise missiles. Yes, I mean, these pictures are, I mean, they're, they're impressive and um, frightening at the same time. I, this, this story, which um, is picked up also in the mail, um, in, inside on page two, is, has some quite frightening stats in there. 26 long-range cruise missiles um, set off today by um, Russia um, with a, a range of 1,600 miles travelling over uh, Iraq and Iran to get to Syria. Um, this is the first time Russia has ever used long-range, its long-range cruise missiles in conflict. I mean, this is just a, a frightening uh, escalation of its military might. It has, it, it, we're told in the inside page of the Daily Mail that um, Putin has managed to send a small army in a matter of days um, to, uh, uh, um, to, he's deployed a small army to the region to help um, um, prop up Assad. And, you know, this is, we are now in a situation where Putin fears nobody. He saw um, that we did nothing over Syria, that you know, David Cameron came to the house and we um, weren't prepared to, to, to do anything there. Um, America has its hands slightly tied. He was able to annex Crimea and the Ukraine. The West shrugged its shoulders and went, oh, this is terrible, but let him do it. Planes have been shot, Malaysian airline planes have been shot down by Russian rebels. The West went, this is terrible, no one did anything. He's now firing off long-range cruise missiles, Syria, to prop up Assad. And I think, you know, the West is in serious trouble here. This, this little story here, the inside story with the blob there, that Britain is sending 120... 100, Where are you looking? Sorry, there. Oh, there, OK, yeah, yeah. 120 soldiers to the Baltic states. Mm. And that's supposed to reassure Estonia... 40 each. ..Latvia and Lithuania against a potential attack from Russia. Mm. I mean... That is a joke. Phil Hammond is going to stand up in the house and, and tell, you know, tell us that. I don't think the Baltic states are going to be particularly reassured by 40 soldiers each. Yeah, I suppose the Spartans had 300 against the Persians, didn't they? Oh, and, uh, yes, all, all that time back. And of course, yeah. NATO is a, it's a, a self-defense organization. Mm. So if, uh, if Putin did attack a member of uh, NATO, that's when the balloon goes up, if he did uh, with those Baltic states. But it's, mm. I mean, that map is fascinating. You mm. see the reach of, uh, of, of Russian power when the missiles are fired in the Caspian Sea there, and they fly over Iran and Iraq, and then they... Uh, hit their targets in, in Syria. But in a way, I mean, look, this has got more dangerous, got more complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, Assad is uh, a client of, of Russia. They have uh, naval and air bases in Syria, have uh, long-standing mm -hmm. uh, uh, bases there. But he, he's getting involved in a way now. Now, let's face it, uh, Britain and America have. Uh, it's harder to criticise him firing missiles when, of course, we invaded Iraq. 
with the Americans with such disastrous uh, uh, consequences. The Americans are bombing in Syria without uh, the well the green light from uh, Assad. They haven't been invited in, in to do that. But it does make it uh, so much harder to to resolve this because there are so many countries now flying and bombing in Syria. I mean, France are as well as the Americans, the Jordanians are. I think some of the Gulf states are. The Syrians are doing it themselves. Mm. And, you, you look at this, and when Cameron, he's got his itchy um, trigger finger, and he also his pride after he lost two years ago when he wanted to bomb uh, yeah. Assad, now he wants to bomb his enemies. But you think, oh, get involved. A few British bombs wouldn't make much much difference in this when there's no shortage of uh, bombing, mm. but you could get sucked into a terrible, terrible conflict, which is a civil war, and it's becoming a battle between the great yeah. powers. And the end result of this, why the EU cares so much, is mm. on the front of the Times, isn't it? There could be millions of migrants now fleeing this yeah. Russian assault. Uh, President Assad now another ground offensive from help, help by yeah. Hezbollah as well. They're talking about three million more. As foreign ministers prepare to meet once again to discuss the refugee crisis. It's because yeah. it, this had sort of dropped off the front pages mm. for a few weeks. And now, uh, you know, I th this, is a, this is a really interesting piece. And we're talking about you know, another, another two or three million refugees that Europe is braced for but completely unprepared for. Because um, we were talking before about how, you know, a lot of the refugees, um, you know, we're told that, you know, they're fleeing ISIL. But they're also, I mean, they're fleeing Assad. Yeah. Um, and now they're going to be fleeing even more bombs. And, uh, you know, it, it's... Well, yeah, they, they did. They, 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 the millions who fled uh, to Jordan and... Uh, to Turkey and into into Lebanon mm. before they started uh, coming uh, Europe's way. Yeah, it was they were fleeing barrel bombs and uh, at attacks by Assad's uh, forces. And of course, Russia doesn't seem to be attacking uh, the, yeah, the jihadis. It seems to be at attacking the, uh, yeah, the the secular opponents of uh, Assad. of Assad. Yeah, yeah. and mm. it is. It's it's a hideously complicated. It's civil war, and I think the Ru the Russians bombing, the Americans bombing, if Britain getting bombing it just doesn't help yeah. you kind of need a political settlement somewhere down the line and that seems to be getting further and further away uh, moving away from that the political story of the uh, of the newspapers for tomorrow of course is the uh, Prime Minister with his wife after conference speech it's uh, it's all over the place isn't it yeah. not least in the eye which talks about Cameron ca showing his caring so which I, I know Kevin you're a little skeptical about of course well I, I was at the smug fest but I didn't get carried away by <laughs> the uh, the applause and the champagne and uh, he, he, gave, he gave a speech that was very well delivered, but I always think the, the test of any speech is to look at the rhetoric and then look at the reality, mm. and actions speak much louder than, than words. And as he, as he tries to position the Tory party as some kind of caring workers' uh, party, you look what's happening with tax credits, which will make a lot of, a lot of people worse off. Uh, austerity is going to bite very, very deeply shortly into, into public services. Mm. And he's not going to help people in that way. And, and the other thing, I'm slightly sceptical, because I've been here ten years ago, when he was hugging his huskies and he had his green wash, and then he wins the election and he ditches, uh, he ditches all that. So I, you know, you know, I've been there, I've been there before on this journey with Dave, and there we are, the Guardian reveals, right? But behind all this rhetoric, which got some of the lefty commentary out there, you know, uh, like Labradors on heat around him. <laughs> Once you look at it, the Resolution Foundation, a group that is chaired by David Willits, a former Conservative uh, minister in the Cabinet, and about to be a Conservative peer, is saying the impact of his policies is going to put another 200,000 families, going to working families, people are in work, get up early, stay up late, do the extra hours, the strivers, as he used to call them, he's going to put them into poverty. That is the reality, not this, not this speech which was written by somebody from mm. Disney for him, the reality, the reality of life is pretty yeah. grim. Delivering those bold ambitions, if we call, call it that, you know, are no doubt going to be yeah. extremely hard. So yep. if, if you think it's all baloney, uh, you know, as in this yep. is, he's never going to do it, why, why bother saying you're going to do it all? Is, it, is he trying to find a legacy for himself over the but next he's never, yeah. He's not going to be held to account, though, is he? Yeah. Because he's, you know, we know that he's not running for a third term. So he, he's he got want, five years. You can do things in he, five he years. Wants, he wants to, but he is. And there's a great ideological programme of, uh, of uh, shrinking uh, shrinking the state and rolling it uh, and rolling it back. The, the state is there and it helps most people, but he doesn't. He wants to create much a, a completely different Britain, and I think it'll be a crueler, nastier mm -hmm. Britain. But he doesn't want to be branded as nasty. He wants to come across as some some caring guy, and he thinks he can he can wrong foot Labour by doing this. But you've got to look. You've got to look at the reality. Don't listen to the rea uh, rhetoric. Look at the reality of what he's doing. Um, Jeremy Corbyn obviously got a swipe, didn't he, from uh, 
Yep. David Cameron, there it is on the front of the Metro, a blast at uh, Corbyn, the Britain hater, the terror supporter, which takes us to the Daily Telegraph. Corbyn refuses to meet the Queen. This is all about the Privy Council, something that he was questioned about after not singing the national anthem. Roy, tell us more about this one. Well, this is a very interesting story that uh, at the Telegraph have got hold of. I mean, there's been speculation for weeks, ever since the leadership election, um, immediately that he, Jeremy Corbyn was elected, um, you know, number 10 issued this invitation onto the Privy Council, he accepted. So, of course, the question was raised, was he going to go to an inauguration ceremony at, at Privy Council, which pretty much everyone always does, in which you have to kneel before the Queen and swear an oath of allegiance to her to be her servant. Um, there was speculation, and now um, his spokesman is saying the very first ceremony would have been tomorrow. Jeremy Corbyn's spokesman is saying he has prior engagements, without specifying what they are. Um, but then when asked, well, is he going to attend the next um, inauguration Senate Privy Council. His spokesman um, cannot confirm mm -hmm. that. So, on the face of it, mm -hmm. um, and we have to take it at face value for what we've got at the moment, it seems like <laughs> a bit of a snub. <laughs> now, my point is, if this is the case, and this story makes the point that if he doesn't go and actually meet um, the Queen and, and be inaugurated uh, and meet her, because you can use, there's a technicality, there's a loophole where you can use, you, I think it's something called... An oath of allegiance, an, is it? A, yeah. An order of, order in, in council, council. Yeah. by which you can post. actually be accepted. Yeah. Exactly, get it in the so face. Much easier. But it he, is, he would, it is. He would be the first leader of the opposition not, yeah. not to do it. And if he didn't want to kneel before the Queen, if he didn't want to swear his allegiance, he shouldn't have accepted his position in the Privy Council. Right, right. they haven't said he won't swear uh, allegiance. It's not a snub. I, I know for separate reasons he's, he's out of London until can he, Sunday. Can he genuinely not go you, tomorrow? You, yeah. uh, well, in I don't, case, I don't know where he's going. He don't know where he is. You just know he's not. Yeah, because it was a, a, another reason. I know he's, okay. no, he's not around. Mm. I don't know when they invited him. And when they told him what his other plans Weeks are, ago. I don't know when uh, when the next date is. I don't know if he will go and say he's got a bad back, so he doesn't have to, you know, bend over. Well, the but Queen's you, got you a bad back, you know. Yeah, well, Come on. well, yeah, I'm sure it's all that work yeah. she's been but doing. But is, is this, these... is this yes. sustainable? Is... That everything that he has to do is difficult for him. But and... the thing is, uh, as leader, also, as leader of the it's opposition, also, it's also the Tory graph and the Conservative yeah, Party if and the establishment. A, if you're going to be a political every, figure, no, no, every time, with principles, every with time, principles. making making a huge issue out of something like this. And I remember the the Sun had the story that he, he agreed to join the Privy Council to get six million quid of um, of money funding for the opposition which wasn't true. You don't have to be in the Privy Council right. to get that money. They're going to do it time after time after time uh, at him. Now, he needs to answer it better, unquestionably. He got into a mess over the national anthem where he said he didn't sing because he was lost in thought, thinking about his yeah. parents And during when the asked war. about the Privy Council, I'm told he had to kneel. He said, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I'll have to have a think about it. Yeah. Of course he will. I mean, it's, I mean like, the, whole, the whole thing is ludicrous, this bit. I mean, I, it's, I would not, quite, it's not I would, ludicrous, I would, I, would, I would like him to put it, two fingers up to the Privy Council. There's, steady, there's five steady, words. Steady. No, I won't do it. No, I know it's on TV. He shouldn't have accepted the position. <laughs> Yeah. So which, this, this begs the I question, as we discussed, it. what's he going to do at the state banquet for the Chinese incoming visit in a couple of weeks' time? Right. Where, where you're expected to wear white tie or national dress. Yeah, well. Look, is he going to? He'll, the, he'll, the, want, the to, like he'll want to meet his the, communist friends, the, the Chinese. So on. is he going to snub them? Or is he going to snub the Queen? Roy, I think you'll find that Jeremy Hunt uh, is now uh, you know, nationalising the <laughs> communist uh, in China for the Tory Party, and thinks yeah. Britons don't work hard enough and should should match him there. I'm, I'm sure there's quite some people in uh, in, the, in the palace who'd like Jeremy Corbyn to turn up as a waiter. Uh, for that state banquet and uh, you know, uh, dish out the food and Maybe uh, pour, like pour, the, pour the drinks. But it is, you know, do, do you go in the fancy dress or do you yeah. not go in the fancy dress? Do you go? Would he go in his sort go? of tweed and his borrowed tie? Yeah, well, I'd quite like him if he did, actually. I would we'll think, see. you know, stand up, stand up for yourself Almost instead of playing the establishment silly games. They get this warm embrace, they want to take you over, make you less radical, and then there's no change. Well, he shouldn't have run for office. No, then. we're going to get angry about things. Let's get angry about tax credits or the privatisation of the NHS and the, the growing uh, queue or the fact that homelessness is up or people can't buy houses. Not over whether or not you go kneel in front of the Queen and brush your nose on her hand. I mean, it is utterly ludicrous. On that note, <coughs> to weightier matters. Right, yeah. Turn away if you sky plusted. Who has risen to the top in Bake Off? Back in a moment. You probably know anyway already. But, uh... <laughs>